spreadsheet you've downloaded contains made up data for eight individuals in the local mayor's office. Now the first thing to notice is that this is a read-only version of the spreadsheet. That means you probably want to go ahead and save it locally on your computer so that you'll know where to find it when you need to, uh, uh, to turn it in. So here's how to do that. You begin by clicking the File tab and then choosing Save As and navigating to wherever you want to put the file. I'm using a, a thumb drive here. And go ahead and give it a, a, a name that, that, that will be familiar for you. I'm going to use Raises uh, and just leave it at that. Click Save. And now we have a local copy. Now let's go over some basic terminology used to indicate where things are in a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet is simply a grid that contains columns which run vertically and are labeled with letters like A, B, and C here, and rows which run horizontally and are labeled with numbers like 1, 2, 3, and 4 here, and so forth. Now at any intersection of a row and column is what we call a cell, uh, like this one that has Haley Blackburn in it, the name Haley Blackburn. And each cell has a unique address that consists of its column letter and its row number. This for example is cell A2, it's in column A and row 2. This area here shows you exactly what is in the cell that you have your cursor on, and that comes in especially handy when you're programming, as we'll see in a moment. Now understanding these cell addresses is important because a lot of what you do with the spreadsheet is tell it to get information from one place, do something with that information, and then put the results in another place. And to do that sort of thing, you have to understand these cell addresses. Now, a quick look at the data shows that everybody in the mayor's office got a raise this year, and uh, uh, a pretty good news story could perhaps be written about uh, who got raises and how much those raises were. And you could pull out your pocket calculator and figure out pretty quickly um, how much of a raise each employee got, but with a spreadsheet you can do it a whole lot faster and a whole lot more efficiently. Now take your mouse and click on cell D1 and just type a column header, let's call this difference, and hit enter. And then below it, type an equal sign from the keyboard, and then use your mouse to click on cell C2, which has Haley Blackburn's salary for this year. Then uh, punch a minus sign on the keyboard and click on cell B2, which has her salary from last year. And then hit enter, and just like that, you get the difference. Big deal, right? You could do that with your calculator in just as much time. But watch this. Here's what you can't do with your calculator in the same amount of time. I'm going to highlight cell D2 again and choose Copy. I right-click, by the way, to bring up that menu. Right-click and choose Copy, and then highlight the cells below it. Right-click again and choose Paste, uh, the, the first icon under Paste Options. And that quickly, it repeated that same calculation for all of the cells beneath it. So now you have everybody's salary difference between uh, last year and this year. That would have taken you a lot longer to do with a calculator, and you might have made a mistake as well. So, um, so right away you can perhaps begin to see some of the advantages a spreadsheet offers. We could also look at how many additional dollars each employee will get this year per dollar that he or she got last year. If we do that, we're looking at something called the percent increase, that is the amount of the increase relative to what the, the, the employee earned last year. Here's how to do that. Use your mouse to click on cell E1, and let's type a column heading. How about percent change, type that, and hit enter. And then uh, the equal uh, sign on the keyboard, remember that's how we always start a formula. And then let's uh, do cell D2, a slash to mean division, uh, and then cell B2, and then enter. And there's the formula for the percent change. Now let's copy that down the column using the keyboard here. Uh, there we go, and enter. There we go, and now we have the percent changes, but notice they're in the wrong format. They're formatted as, as dollars, which is just like column D. In order to get these formatted as percentages, I need to highlight all of these values 
and then right click with the mouse and then from this uh, menu that pops up choose format cells and then uh, go down here and find percentage on the list and let's see to keep everything neat let's change the decimal places to zero uh, so we'll have nice neat two-digit percentages and then click OK there we go and so there we are a column of two digit two digit percentages notice that the column isn't quite wide enough for the percent change heading to fix that move your cursor over the border between the two columns and then double click when you do that the column will automatically expand to fit whatever is in the column now we have two ways of looking at the raises David Donegan got the largest number of additional dollars but Earl Jakes got the largest number of additional dollars per dollar of his original salary. To round out the story, it would be nice to have totals um, for columns B, C, and D. In other words, to know that the total amount of money that was spent on salaries last year, the total this year, and the total of the raises, the total of the difference column. You could do that with a pocket calculator, but it would take a while. Uh, these are five-digit numbers. Plus, you'd also probably make a mistake. There's a way to do it with Excel. Begin by clicking on cell A10 and typing a label for the row. Let's use total. And then here at the bottom of uh, column B, type an equal sign and the word SUM, S-U-M, followed by a left parenthesis. And then using either the mouse or the keyboard, highlight the cells that you want to add up. And then finish with a right parenthesis and press Enter. And that quickly, it has totaled up column B. Now, that's great for column B. How about C and D? Well, we're going to copy that formula over. I'm going to do it differently this time. You see that little square down in the corner? I'm going to grab that with a mouse and just drag it over here to the bottoms of column C and D. And when I let up, it copies the formula that quickly. It's just another way to copy things in Excel. Now look at column C. You have these pound signs. What does that mean? It means the column isn't wide enough for the number that's there. You know how to fix this. Just float the cursor on the border between the two, double click, and the column will stretch out. Okay, so look now at uh, the formula we have for, for uh, summing up column B. It's sum B2 to C9. When we scoot over to column C, the sum changes to C2 to C9, and in D, it's D2 to D9. We didn't do that, remember? We just copied the formula. Excel is smart enough to realize when you're copying a formula from one column to another or one row to another, it automatically updates the cell addresses. That's one reason Excel is so powerful. You don't have to tell it that every single time. We just learned that a total of $56,029 was spent on the salary increases. An interesting way to look at how the salary increases were allocated would be to find out what proportion of that $56,029 went to each individual employee. Excel can do that pretty quickly. Uh, as part of showing you how, I need to remind you of what happens in Excel when you copy a formula down a column. Remember in the percent change column here, uh, the cell address got updated every time we copied that formula down the column. All right, so let's um, come over here to column F and type a column heading. Let's use percent whole and uh, hit enter. And then start with the equal sign because we're going to write a formula here. Uh, so equal and then go over to cell D2, hit the slash for division, and then go down to the total, uh, D10, and hit enter. And there we have the uh, percentage of of the raise that went to that employee. Okay, now let's copy that formula down the column just like we did with the percent change, but when we do we get an error. What's going on here? If you look at the formula you can see that uh, instead of dividing by D10 Excel is trying to divide by D11, 12, 13. In other words it updated that cell address uh, by default. We need it to not do that. To get it to stop you do this. Uh, just simply type a dollar sign in front of the column address and in front of the, the, the row uh, in the original formula. Now when we copy that down, uh, watch what happens. 
works out great because uh, those dollar signs anchor the cell addresses at, at, at D10 and it doesn't automatically update. So sometimes you want Excel to be able to do that. Now we've got a formatting problem here again. Uh, let's get these into percentages. Again, right click, choose uh, uh, Format Cells right here, and Percentages, and let's change this to a zero. That's just a preference of mine. Uh, and then click OK. And there we go. We have uh, our, our percentages formatted um, nice and neatly again. And now we've learned that David Donegan's $9,327 raise was 17% of the total $56,029 spent on raises. We've already noticed that Earl Jakes's 40% salary increase was the largest of those handed out, and it wasn't that hard to determine that it was the largest. It was easy to scan down through the column and see that that's the biggest number. But it would be a whole lot more difficult if there were three or four hundred numbers, or even three or four thousand. In those situations, the sort function in Excel can help you out. Uh, to begin a sort, you need to highlight all the data that you want to include in the sort just like that. Notice that I excluded the last row. That's the total. I don't want that mixed in with all the individual records. And then from the data tab you choose the sort button which opens up the sort dialog right here. Make sure this my data has headers box is checked. That's basically telling Excel to exclude the, the, the labels at the tops of the columns. And then uh, choose the first thing you want Excel to sort by. In this case we want that to be the percent change column. And we want it to sort from largest to smallest, uh, th thereby putting the largest figure at the, at the top of the spreadsheet where we can see it easily. Now, in case there are ties in the, in the, uh, the, the, the percent increase in salaries, what do we want Excel to do then? How about adding a level and telling it to break those ties alphabetically by the first name? So I'm, I'm choosing here uh, uh, to, to sort then by name and also to sort from A to Z. When we click OK, Watch what happens. Right now we have uh, uh, all the data sorted with Earl Jakes' 40% salary increase at the very top. And look what it did with the tie between Allsbrook and Blackburn. Um, it sorted them with Clay Allsbrook on top because his name comes first alphabetically. Now let's just tidy things up a little bit. It might be good, for example, to have this percent change column extend all the way down to, to row 10 and uh, you can dress things up a little bit here with rules as well. Uh, for example, if I highlight these cells, uh, choose the Home tab, and then on this icon choose Bottom Border, I get a nice little line there dividing the individual records from the total. So that makes it look a little bit nicer. Averages, which are also called means, and medians are two ways of looking at what the typical number is in a range of numbers. So it might be interesting, for example, to know what the average salary increase was or what the average salary percent change was. They're kind of hard to compute by hand, but Excel can do them for you very quickly. Let's take a look at how that happens. Starting here in A11, let's type a row heading, uh, average, and then hit enter, and come over to B11 start with the equal sign and type the word average and then a left parenthesis and as you've done before highlight the range of numbers that you want to average and then type a right parenthesis and hit enter and uh, if we want to copy that across the other columns it's just as easy as grabbing that little square at the bottom and copying over to the the cells that we want to copy that formula to and Excel does that for us automatically now we have uh, some formatting problems here in the percent change column. We need to switch that to a percent. You've seen this a couple of times now. Uh, just uh, go through the format cells dialog here, switching to two decimal places and there's our percentage. So that quickly you can figure an average for all of those columns. A median is just another way to express what the typical number is in a range of numbers. It's 
specifically designed for situations where you have one or a couple of very large numbers compared to the rest of the numbers. So you have sort of extremes. Let's see how to, uh, to calculate one of those in Excel. Begin here on cell A12 and let's type a row uh, label median and then over in B12 type an equal and just like you did with the average um, uh, this time type median in a parenthesis highlight the range of the numbers that you want to get a median for finish with a right parenthesis and hit enter and then copy it over uh, just like you did with the median formula and as you did with the median formula let's go ahead and change the format uh, here in the percent change to, uh, uh, to a percentage there we go and so now we have the average salary and the median salary so now we're able to make newsworthy comparisons. For example, Earl Jakes' increase is well above average. Meanwhile, uh, Allsbrook and Blackburn's increases are well below average. Now let's just tidy things up a little bit and uh, save this file so it's ready to upload. Uh, just looking at the layout of the table here, it might be kind of nice to put another rule across that top row, just kind of like the one we have on row 9. So I'm just going to highlight uh, all the, uh, the information in, in row 1 here, and uh, choose this icon and click bottom border there, and puts a nice little rule there. Uh, let's see, it might be nice to have these bold face, just highlight them and click the big B for bold. And let's do the same for the column headers as well, that also sort of looks nice. There we go. Now let's save all this work as a new file. Saving it as a new file preserves the original stuff in case we find we need to go back and make changes. Uh, to save a file, you begin by clicking on the File tab right here. Choose Save As. I'm working off of a thumb drive here, a removable disk. Click that and uh, just modify the file name a little bit. I'm going to change this to Raises Analyzed and finally click Save. And there we've got our file saved as a, a new file. We have the old one as well and this is now ready to upload. So congratulations, that's the introduction to uh, some basic skills for Microsoft Excel.